let me we're kind of roll this into the highlight. It said, you know, highlights would just show specific moments where it rallied or this happened, that happened, but more of an educational highlight to go over what we're talking about, uh, both in real time and then after. And that is when a when a price sells off in this case, like it did on this particular session, where it's doing nothing for an hour and in 20 minutes it goes down 20 points. So it's in an eight point range for two hours and a 17 point, 20 point sell off in 20 minutes. Something must have happened, must have been balanced to imbalance. Now, that's not even the point. It's always people, when you start moving in a direction, in this case, down, the reason why it's able to move down is because less people are shorts. Shorts would want it to go down because that's how they make money on that side in that position. But if, if there were a lot of shorts, it would be hard to go down because when you're short, you're a buyer. OK, too many shorts, too many buyers. Understand that. So just by its very nature, price is breaking, going down. You could safely assume that there aren't a lot of shorts that caught it. And when you then could understand that, you also look and say, well, when you miss a short, meaning you see the price go down, you didn't get short, you're a little pissed. Generally, the way the mind thinks is, well, I'll do the opposite. And I'll try to buy this break, especially if it's coming from a, a period where nothing's going on. You didn't get short. It broke 10 points. It's like, well, I'm going to, the mind's going to get me to do the opposite. I, I missed a 10 point sell off being short from 10 points higher. So now I'll buy it for a 10 point bounce. And so what you get is a lot of people, a lot of traders, short time frame traders who missed the, the short. That's why it broke. So you could assume most people are not short. And then you also, have a lot of them people doing the opposite, getting long and contributing to the continuation. All right. So if we clear this lineup, you're looking for people to say, you're actually looking, people are looking for the market to do this, to finally find a bottom and really get a nice rally. They missed all this opportunity. So they're trying to do the opposite. The problem is most of the times, they're already beat up by the time the bounce comes because they were trying to do it all the way down and they were getting their ass kicked. And so the same thing that makes price go up is the same thing that helped it go down. There weren't a lot of shorts and that what allowed it to go down. There isn't going to be a lot of longs and that's going to allow it to go up. So in order to predict a bottom, call it a temporary bottom, I mean a bottom swing low, or maybe the low of the day. But in order to start predicting that, you can't be in the fight with everybody else trying to predict it. You got to wait till they get their ass kicked. And puke is a word synonymous with people exiting a losing position. Puke. So in the hollow bars that we have right there, it's showing you when it's green, longs puking. And what's important is you can compare it to what how many longs puked here Versus in here, versus in here. And you could see by comparing two things, that's how you find value, that a lot of longs puked in two instances, one right here, and we did rally, and the other one right here, and we did rally. And because all of this wasn't even there, it was a big profile right here, and then right in here. And then some more longs puked in here, which also helped price rally. So you have to understand price cannot break if too many people are short. Price cannot rally if too many people are long. Too many people on the team. That that means price rallied and a lot of people were long. That means a lot of people made money. No, it can't do what most people or a lot of people want it to do. Too many longs, too many sellers. Just think about that. If there are too many sellers, it's going to be hard for the price of anything to go up. There are too many sellers. So the bottom feeders, people that are trying to, 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 to buy it and find a bottom, find a bottom, find a bottom, they get beat up. And by the time there is a bottom, they aren't on the team. And then what, what do they say? And I'm sure a lot of people listening to this will, we could said the same thing at some point in your career. I'm long, stopped out, long, stopped out, long, stopped out. And the first time I don't get long, it rallies. 
you know, sure, I bought it, get stopped out. I bought it, get stopped out. I bought it, get stopped out. And the first time I don't buy it, that's when it went. And that's when it worked. Well, it's not anything personal that the market was looking and pointing at you and saying, ha ha. No, price was looking at massive amount, massive amount of people and saying, aha. It's the function of a market, not something personal. A market can't rally if too many people think it's going to rally. Or it's just really going to have trouble rallying in your normal ebb and flow if too many people want it to rally. Why do people want something to rally? Because they're long. That makes sense. So when you wait and you could convince yourself that if too many people are long, it's going to have trouble going up. Then you want to see less longs, and that's what longs puking means. When longs puke, that means they're exiting their long position. There's less longs. Less longs, we put it up here, LL, always equals less what? Sellers. Well, what do you mean? There are people that might be watching this for the first time. Well, when you're long, after you're long, are you a buyer or a seller to cover that long position? You're a seller. There's no other answer to that. And so obviously, if you have less of those longs, you're going to have less sellers. And, and it starts to build out the story and the, the right data you should be absorbing and, and reading to predict what's going to happen next and stack probabilities. And don't put yourself in a position to listen to price. If price could talk, it's important to listen to what it's got to say, but not believe in it. Because price is going to bullshit you to get you engaged. Price is like a salesman. Yeah, sometimes that salesman is going to sell you good value. But if they are selling you too hard, they're probably trying to create the value. And so a salesman that's just working, is that's what price is. Because a salesman needs to get you engaged. Price needs to get you engaged. And so while you want to listen to it, you can't always trust it. You can't say, oh, a lot of buyers come in, I'm going to buy it. No, a lot of buyers come in and the price doesn't rally. That's a clue to do the opposite. A lot of sellers come in and sell it. No, probably too late if it's going to work. And if sellers get rejected, that's where the information is. It's opposite of what conventional wisdom might be and your intuition might be. So then you get too many, hey, a lot of shorts. Let me get short. Let me get on the team. Rah, rah. Bullshit. You don't want to be short with a lot of people because then you're competing with who? Buyers. If you're a buyer to cover a short, and so are thousands of other people, and thousands of other people is considered a lot, you're competing with people trying to do the same thing. You're all going after one thing, price. And you're all trying to do the same thing to price, buy it. Where's price going? Buyers are competing higher. You can't compete with too many other people and expect to be right a lot. You got to wait for a shakeout. You got to shake out the weak hands in order to clear the skies to go higher or to go lower. Too many longs, too many sellers. Less longs, less sellers. And once you start not only thinking of it like that, but you get beyond thinking. It becomes back of your hand. It becomes, I don't have to think about where the F and brake pedal is when the asshole in front of me stops. You know what I mean? If you're good, you anticipated you was going to stop. So you're already slowing down. Or you know nobody is on your left. You just get in the other lane. And and all is well. That's the difference between a good driver who's paying attention and knows how to react because he's anticipating. And someone who isn't is always reacting, reacting, reacting. So you got to get back in your hand moment where you're just reacting to the information you see and you call bullshit on price, you call bullshit on moves, you know, bullshit on like we had a weak rally earlier. A weak rally means that, you know, we had we did go up on kind of a, a, a dovish comment. And why didn't we go up higher? Why didn't we go up faster? Well, that was a clue that there was some more weakness in the market. When you had weakness in the strength. I could say that to 100 smart people. And unless they trade, they wouldn't know what that means. Weakness in the strength. Go about it where, where do you find less longs? Well, when they puke, exit, get stopped out. When you get stopped out of a long, 
you're no longer a seller above. And there were two instances in real time to read that. And we talked about it in here, not up here. That this had a good chance to be a temporary bottom. I won't call lows of the day and things like that because I just, I don't know. I think it's asinine to say, yep, this low of the day, guys, that's it. No, it's got a good chance to be a temporary bottom because of the things we went over with all the pukes that we had here. A huge short came out, got filled right away. And I had said, you know, he's a huge short and he only looked for a few ticks. Why didn't he look for more? If he was that bearish, he'd still be short, right? And then you start thinking of it along along that kind of uh side and, and and you get at the time the biggest long puke of the entire session 